every single day. I people, you know, they'll tell me, Gary, you're 27 years old. Well, that don't mean nothing. It really doesn't. I mean, I can make a dumb decision, turn the, turn on the wrong side of the road, and that's it. Nor somebody else. That's actually what happened when I started dating Laura. I had no, I had no idea how to drive in Muncie. I had never been in Muncie by myself because I'm from Newcastle, and I I happened to go down. I was going down Madison, and I turned on a one way, the wrong way. Well, there was a bus driver who wasn't too happy with me. <laughs> he started yelling. <laughs> I think I think yeah. He said some words. I think, but I. I was a newbie. I didn't know what I was doing, but I've I've learned a lot since. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. Is that what they say? Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I I know it pretty well now. All right, let's start with prayer, and then we'll jump into today's study. <laughs> Father, thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for keeping us safe throughout the entire week, and thank you for loving us and always being with us and never forsaking us. We pray for our families and our friends who are being tended to by the doctors and who will be tended to by doctors um, these next few weeks, Lord. We just pray for them. We pray that you'll be with their health, be with their thoughts and their anxieties, be with them during this entire time. And we pray that you'll give them a peace, God, that surpasses all understanding. Lord, we just thank you for the doctors that we have. We pray you'll be with their wisdom. Help them to know what they're doing and to do it effectively and to help help those who they tend to to get better and to excel in their health. We thank you so much, God, for the Holy Spirit and being able to grow in Him and the sanctification, the process of our sanctification, Lord. We pray that you'll help us to grow deeper in a love for you and in a knowledge of you and in your grace. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen. Alrighty, after this, we got two more lessons. We're in uh, lesson four, and it's titled Kindness and Goodness. And like I did last week, I'm just going to begin with reading Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, and explaining what the Apostle Paul says the fruit of the Holy Spirit is. He says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. So today we're in kindness and goodness. Um, so question number one. It's easy to be kind to others when others are being kind to us. Jesus said, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. John sixteen thirty three. Jesus assures us, that we will have trouble in this world. Therefore, for example, when talking with someone who only wants to argue with you, how do you handle this? What are some benefits that come from being kind to others when others aren't so kind to us? Really, two, two, question, two to three questions right there. When talking with someone who only wants to argue with you, how do you handle this? Okay, speaking for myself, sometimes that's hard. Now, uh, when you when you just want to be kind to the person, just trying to be nice to the person, you're just trying to have a conversation with them. And for instance, I've I've worked at places where people don't leave their baggage at the door, and they bring it in, and they mix it in with their job, and they start drama with their fellow employees, and you know nobody wants any of that. <laughs> Healthy side then, and. You try to be nice, and you just try to be that friend. Say, hey, what's going on? And they're just mad at you <laughs> for asking what's going on. Um, I had a, a customer the other day who went to the manager of this one place mm. and complained about me, said I didn't like her. Now, the situation was, she wanted to buy something for him to sell. Hmm. I mean, we have to have tables or something to put our stuff on. Yeah. But she thought about that. So. Oh, no. Yeah. But that woman is very good. I mean, she has, she's waiting on me to come see her. Oh. So, you know. Yeah. I, you just, you never know what's going through someone's mind. Yeah. You know? And you continue to walk. 
and feel it mm-hmm. in their hands. Yeah. And so, you know, I did it like on Saturday. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> traffic down the road is not that friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, especially they come inside your store and th- they want something that's not for sale. Well, you telling them that it's not for sale. <laughs> we have a lot of them for sale. Really? Yeah. They wow. say, well, your stuff's all donated. It ought to be for sale. I said, it will be eventually. <laughs> yeah. When something else comes along. Yeah, Kathy absolutely. Wants to right. To get to. Yeah. But, like Kathy said, you know, they don't go in Walmart and ask to. They buy their decorations. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and if they do, they... There may yeah. still be people that don't know. That's true. Well, you know, that's good that you weren't so quick to kind of judge her. You know, and not Maybe judge is the wrong word, but you, you considered what she was going through in her life, and you chose to be, be, behave in a certain way, based on the knowledge that you had. Because, I, I mean, I imagine I may be a little irritable if I'm waiting on a liver transplant. I, you know, I mean, that's a very serious matter. <laughs> and if you're on a list, yeah, that could that can make you irritable, I would think so. Um, but that doesn't excuse the person, I don't think, from being mean to you. But. Uh, what are some benefits that come from being kind to others when others aren't so kind to us? Well, I think if you're kind to others, then no one would be kind to you back. <laughs> You don't have to worry about getting yelled at in the face for the majority of the time. You feel better inside. You do. You feel better inside. Yep. And that's why this first question reminds me of my son, who is the principal. Yeah. Because they have, you know, certain rules and regulations. And then he has parents that come in and want to argue with every little thing oh. that they're doing. And they can't yeah. jolly on me to yeah. attend this. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So on and so forth. And then this one time, this couple brought their attorney oh my. with them. They had a, a meeting with him in the morning, he said. And so here they come, and they brought their attorney. So he said, they went in, and he said, I told them how it was, how it was going to be, and all that. He said the attorney did not open his open say a word, then I said I was nice about it, I just laid yeah. it on the line and said this is it Yeah. and they, they went out and I imagine that attorney <laughs> probably thought that whole process was a waste of time <laughs> well I'm thinking but I mean, said, you know, they thought that they were going to intimidate me by yeah. bringing their attorney and he said no, we, this is the way it is <laughs> it yep. didn't bother him at all that's good he stood his ground because yeah. I think the problem nowadays is, you know, ki- kids and parents of children, they want their children to be rewarded for things that they shouldn't be rewarded for. That's the problem, a lack of, a lack of discipline yeah. in, uh, in many kids' lives today. Yeah. Wow. He said that, you know, his parents will just argue with, you know, try yeah. to argue with him. He won't argue yeah. with him. But they try to because they're trying to get their point across. Yeah. And Six teachers as witnesses. She did do it, but that, no, yeah, she, my, oh, I my kid couldn't do that. Now. I'm going through the superintendent. Well, you go right ahead. Yeah, because I mean, Dennis, he has he has roles he has to follow. Yeah. I mean, he there's someone higher up than him, so he has to answer too. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, their children. Well, that's a lack of knowledge. I mean, God's work says we're children of wrath by nature. So <laughs> they just failed to understand that. <laughs> they understood it says that. says in the word that the blueness of the womb causes a heart to be <laughs> What is it? The blueness of the womb? Is that a song? I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't spare the rod, spoil the child. Yeah, uh. Several years ago, and I don't know exactly when it happened, but probably mm-hmm. 15 years ago, mm-hmm. they had this, you know, you want to, 
referring to my children and build their self esteem. Mm -hmm. But they, you know, they've gone about it all the wrong way. The way you build self esteem is not thinking of self, it's thinking of others. Mm -hmm. And right. it's the big God God God. Yeah, yeah. That kind of makes you wonder about the future for the kids. Mm -hmm. It really does. Um, mm. More reason to pray. Self-esteem does not come no. from patting on the back. No, yep. You did a good job when maybe they didn't. Right. Maybe they did, but maybe they didn't. Right. You know. But you don't want their ego to be filled with themselves no. while at the no. same time ignoring their neighbors. And, mm. Yeah, mm. they just need to think of others. Yeah, absolutely. All right, question number two. When it comes to the character of God... The character of God, many would say that he is unkind for letting us go through hard times. How would you defend God's kindness to someone who accused God of being unkind? You know, I've heard I've heard the arguments that, you know, why, why, if God is all loving, why in the world would he let this happen to my family member? Why in the world would he let this happen to me? Why are children starving, etc.? How, how would you... There's no just one simple way of defending God in this area, but how would you personally defend God? Thinking of my own experiences, <clears throat> you know, it, it's <clears throat> I learn more in difficult situations. Yeah. And I had some difficult situations in my life, mm -hmm. but I learned. easy road does not teach me much. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and the scripture says, be chastened. Be chastened in the ways yeah. that we love. Yeah. And so, God does that. Yeah. And you know, the argument, when I hear, I'll see on Facebook, people will, maybe just not on Facebook, but I'll hear conversations about God where People will say, well, if God is all loving, why is why are children starving? Well, God gave you a command to love your neighbor. He gave all of us a command to love our neighbor. And if all of us would do that, well, I don't think there would be a lot of starving children in this world. You know, if we, if we loved our neighbor like God wanted us to, well, we'd all be supplying for one another, meeting each other's needs, and etc. Um, but I know that some people do not respond to the gospel um, they don't want to respond to the gospel, number one, just in their nature. But two, they, they, they have an, a lot of emotional baggage that they've seen something happen to one of their friends and one of themselves. And they just think it's, – it's as if they just want to have the questions, but they don't want to seek out the answers. They want to stand within their emotional turmoil is what it is. And again, I think maybe it's a combination of not wanting to admit – that um, God is all loving and God is who he is because if you do admit that, well, you know you're going to have to uh, answer to someone. He loves you. you got to remember that. But, <laughs> you know, you got to admit that there's someone higher than you. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. All righty. Question number three. Can you think of any situations in life where it would be appropriate to refrain from being kind? It's kind of a trick question, maybe. Can, can you think of any situations in life where it would be appropriate to refrain from being kind? Probably not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because if you say things Mm -hmm. and because you're being kind they mm -hmm. need to hear yeah. whatever right. so. well, I know some children they don't think you're being kind if you discipline them and uh, so I guess it really is a subjective um, thing because if say say someone came to you and they wanted to rob they wanted you to help them rob a retail store and they 
they said, hey, I, you know, I don't have the money to feed my family. I need to go in and I need to get all this food so I can take back to my family. Well, the kind thing would not be to help him out. <laughs> Rather, it would be to maybe help him with your own finances or <laughs> to tell him, you know, this isn't the right, right way to go about that. And it, <laughs> yeah, 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 we ha that's right. <laughs> there really is. Yep, and New Newcastle as well. And my dad, he was a big, he, he volunteered at um, God's Grain Bin. That's what it was called in Newcastle. And ooh, they'd have people lining up. And they didn't care who you were. They didn't ask no questions. You just, if you were there for food, they'd load you up. That's the way it is, especially since <clears throat> You just pull up. They load it up. Open your trunk and they go. Oh, that's nice. So you don't, you know, they don't go face to face. Yeah, anymore. yeah. But you know what surprises me is some of the stuff they do. I mean, the first one to only use was so many onions. <laughs> <laughs> Every week they were bringing, you know, yeah. three, five pounds of onions. I don't know Goodness. how much they were back then. It was a big bag of onions. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, last week, there was a whole, each person had got a whole case of bananas. Oh, wow. I mean, not not five bananas, not ten bananas. Like a whole box of full. A whole box of bananas. Wow. Now, this day and age, people don't know how to make bananas. Most people no. don't. So, you know, by now, many of those bananas have been Are spoiled. because it's it's right across the road from where I work yeah, yeah. in the mall and uh, yeah. there's a guy that volunteers back there so he'll take our cart we have a cart that yeah. we use mm -hmm. and he can walk over there and cut them off you know mm. <laughs> I mean it doesn't sound fair but <laughs> walkers can get cut in and cut yeah. them off and so he does that of course he's volunteering for that so mm -hmm. he's yeah. But anyway. Did he share any bananas with them? He has. <laughs> he has. I got bananas. Actually, <coughs> Monday he said, Susie, you may as well put those bananas on because there's no one there. You know, yeah. Where else yeah. You may as well put nobody wants them. He said. So I, I've been going to make banana bread, but with all of our medical things the last two days, I haven't had I time. got it made yet. But I can throw those bananas in the freezer. Yeah, yeah. More of that tomorrow, and I can make banana yeah. bread one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people don't know. Yeah, no kidding. They, I mean, you got all these fast food restaurants, and you can just go to McDonald's, <laughs> a couple dollars, and that's it. Not good for your health, but all the time. But oh boy, well now, and you talk about food stamps nowadays, especially right now, you can go out and get a job pretty easy. Uh, you, they have temp services, temp agencies, and a temp agency, some people tend to look down on. I don't at all. Temp agencies are actually a fantastic employer to work with. So you go in there, and they'll they'll ask you your background. You give them your background. doesn't matter if you don't have a GED, high school diploma, college degree. doesn't matter. You can go in there, and they will find they will find you a job. And, yeah, it, yeah, and they'll ask your qualifications. Yeah, they'll ask your qualifications, and you'll normally go into a – um, whatever employer they assign you with, and you can choose whether or not you want to stay with that employer. And if you don't, they'll be like, okay, that's okay. They'll find you another one. So in a way, you can – I don't want to encourage bouncing from jobs, but they do kind of give you a security. You go in there for 90 days, and if that business wants to hire you on, then you're no longer a temp. You work for that company. So, But you can do that, at being anyone. Ralph has done that. Has he? Yeah. I mean, he used to drive semi-commercial. Oh, wow, well, yeah. Right, he can do that. So he, he did temporary. Yeah, and I think it's a, it doesn't, and that that was before and co before placed, COVID too. They placed him. I think they placed him temporary. And, and then he retired off. <laughs> you just know he worked somewhere. <laughs> anyway, he, he did. I know there's been times when he's hired again. 
Yeah. Well, I know nowadays with COVID and people need workers. Um, they just need workers. So, uh, that's right. Especially, especially if the government's paying you not to work. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you if you are making more staying at home than going to work, absolutely, absolutely. All right, question number four. Do do not be deceived, Paul the apostle says. Bad company corrupts good character, and so now we're on the fruit of the Holy Spirit, um, specifically goodness. Goodness, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good character, or other translation says good morals. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Maintaining a good character should be important for a Christian. If we want to grow in the spiritual fruit of kindness, we must surround ourselves with things that would help do this. What could you and I surround ourselves with to help increase our growth in kindness? I know from personal experience that if you if you start hanging out with people that you shouldn't hang out with, well, it's going to rub off on you. Eventually, it'll rub off on you in one way or another. Because um, that's, you know, if, if if you walk with the unwise, you're going to become unwise. You walk with the wise, there's a proverb, Solomon says, you walk with the wise, you'll more likely become wise. Um, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're child of wrath by nature. Children of wrath by nature. Really. It really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to, you have to really see when you come to a situation. You have to see the end before the beginning. If I put myself in this spot, is this going to happen? Am I going to be tempted to go this way or that way? And just make that decision up ahead of time. I think of someone who wants to eat healthy, someone who wants to lose weight. Well, if you surround yourself by McDonald's, Burger King, and all these other fast food restaurants, you're not going to do a really good job. At accomplishing your goal rather than going to a uh, fresh food market or whatever that store is called. A healthy, fresh time, fresh, time, fresh food market. Fresh time and, yeah, surrounding yourselves around vegetables and, you know, you're going to have a better chance of accomplishing that goal. Um, doing it that way. So, same thing with the world. If you surround yourself with uh, negative influences, it's going to rub off on you in some way. And that's why I think... That's right. Yeah, Philippians four eight, and it just this makes me think of the the importance of meeting with the church, the importance. Uh, understandably, right now it's kind of a uh, COVID has caused COVID has striked fear and within the hearts of so many people, and mm-hmm. but that fellowship is so essential. Uh, it's just you need it. I think of you know we're 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 soldiers. We are a spiritual army of God, and we all need each other. I mean, I think, you know, we're out in battle right now with Satan, and, you know, we can't leave each other hanging, you know, and, but. Um, I think about my little grandson, he's two and a half, mm-hmm. he's turned two and a half last week, but he's missed Sunday school class, you know. Yeah. Uh, of course, he would be in the nursery at this time, but they have right. little classes for Oh, good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's missed out. On yeah. Well, Lord willing, come this summer, we'll be able to. I'm really wanting to dive into. I've I've been on my Facebook page, my personal Facebook page on the. I don't think I've posted much on the church, but on my 
uh, personal Facebook page, and on this they have a Selma, like the town of Selma Facebook page. I got on there and I shared the church. I shared that we were wanting to uh, begin a children's ministry, and if anyone was available or interested, we're here. <laughs> and uh, I had about 25 people like that status, but we want to see that status from being liked to people yeah. coming in here. That's that's the objective. So this summer, I'm hoping um, the fairs, the fairgrounds, will open up and be able to do some missionary work out there. Lord willing, uh, just bluebird days. Bluebird days, yep. I'm tired of this COVID. I'm tired of feeling shut in and being choked out. Yeah, absolutely. I haven't heard a single person say, I just love these things. <laughs> but you know, I we've had a custom that ever since I've worked at the Attic Window in Lansing, when she comes in, she wears one of these. I've never asked her you know, if she's susceptible to but I'm going to ask her because I came to realize I know her. <laughs> I mean, but yeah. I didn't. Yeah. But she grew up close to Lori. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's yeah. a friend of Lori's. Oh, wow. Um, Small world. Kathy Snodgrass. Is oh. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, ever, for, ever since I've known her. You know what? I'm going to put my hand in this. Small world. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah, Neither have I. Right. It might be, yeah. Well, that's great. <laughs> that's I'm, wonderful. And of course, I use a lot of hand sanitizer, mm -hmm. but that's not good for you. Yeah, too much. But I, I do because I have the hand products on. I, right. And, and I used to, this is stupid, but I used to lick my fingers because I say I've worked so hard in my lifetime, I've worn off my finger cramps. <laughs> Yeah. So now I keep a cloth there that's saturated in either one or two of those combination of Yandex and sanitation. Yeah. So I'm, I'm always got my fingers Keeping your fingers moist. Consequently, yeah. my fingernails start to be moist. Right. Yeah. Split. <laughs> I know. But, <laughs> and I had. Do you have any problems with that, Mark? <laughs> well, I just know that that's how they used to come over to the bank. I was yeah. a bank cat. Well, I was so thrilled when I had it. <laughs> and then it, it disappeared. Yeah. All right, question number five. It's important to remember that our strength comes from the Lord when walking in the Spirit and growing in the fruits of the Spirit. Can you think of a biblical story where someone other than God displayed their goodness to someone? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 I think of. Uh, I think it's a, a, a 
good story. It's maybe this didn't come to mind, but Peter, when uh, the the poor man that was at the gates, the poor man was asking for money. He said, "I ain't got money, but what I do have is so much better than money." He gave him the gospel. Uh, that's that's sure is showing goodness to somebody. Um, I think of Joseph with his brothers. That was a lot of goodness he showed his brothers. Oh, boy. Because he, he had the opportunity right there to choose which path he wanted to go down. I, I could strike him dead if I wanted to. But he chose the path of mercy instead. And uh, um, Because reading through the Old Testament, especially in the book of Judges, and specifically with Saul, um, you can see how a position of leadership can really get to your head if you let it. As uh, with Saul, I mean, he really let that get to him, and but Joseph chose to not do that. Um, um, all right, question number six: God takes us through hills and valleys to help us grow in our walk with Him. Depending on the hill we're climbing, or the valley, we'll, or the valley we're walking through, this may or may not be hard to see and even accept. In what ways do you see this as being a good thing? So in other words, in what way do you see going through valleys, climbing up mountains, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we all have our own valleys we walk through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so mm-hmm. one way or another. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I'm making a conscious a conscious effort to look at trials and tribulations as a time to learn from, rather than a time to question God. Why are you letting this happen? Those are two complete different mindsets. And choosing to view that as a blessing, as a time to learn. And knowing that God doesn't expect for me to have all my ducks in a row. But he wants me to learn from this and grow from this. Um, I think of doctrinally where he's where I was and where he's taken me. That whole process. I'll tell you what, during that, during that process of trying to figure out what was, what was true and what was false... Um, whether it be legalism or whatever it was. I mean, that was a hard time for me. I mean, there were relationships were broken off, family members broken off. I mean, it was a deep personal issue. And, you know, I look back and think I'd do it all over again too just because I was relying on myself, you know, in the beginning. But now, you know, God told me, you know, Gary, you're an idiot. (laughs) You did. You had it wrong. <laughs> but <laughs> no. But you you see what I'm saying? No, I was. You know. Now you can see that you need me, Gary. You you can only rely on me, and you know to help you grow to get you through all these trials and tribulations. And uh, but yeah, we all have our own valleys to go through and uh, different mountains to climb. Hmm. Alrighty, last question. Question number seven. In Luke chapter 18, verse 19, we're told that God is the only one who is truly good. Remembering that He is good and that He is our, fa- that he is our Father is vitally important to remember. Why do you think this is true, and do you think that this knowledge can help us grow in the fruit of goodness? We've kind of, kind of brushed over it a little bit already. Um, remembering that he is good is a good thing, especially when things in our life are bad. <laughs> remembering that he is not trying to be mean to you. He's not trying to... Um, he, he, he always remains good. And everything you go through is for your good. Uh, really do. And your emotions may be telling you the opposite. Your feelings may be saying, Ah, oh, God, no, oh, I don't like you. But that's right. Mm-hmm. Even when all your thoughts and your feelings are telling you to do the opposite. That's right. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, um, remembering that he is good can help you grow in the fruit, fruit of goodness. I think that if you go about your life thinking, okay, remembering, okay, Jesus, you want me to grow in you. You know, sanctification every single day, becoming more like Christ every single day, whether it be in word or deed, anyway, remembering that God is good, and then when you approach a situation where you're tempted to not be good, you remember, okay, God is good, and he would want me to resemble him, so, therefore, I am to be good. So, hope that makes sense. Alrighty, that concludes lesson number four. Um, lesson number five. Next week we have two more lessons. Um, we have went through love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and then we'll be in with gentleness and faithfulness next week. And then the last one will conclude with self control. I was filling Janet in that after this, I have two options we can do. Um, there's a big packet on the Gospel of John. Uh, this thing is like 30, 30 weeks long. It goes through each chapter is what it does. Or there is, which eventually we can get to both. There is a, there is a video series. It is called Defenders Class. And there's a Christian apologist and teacher named William Layton Craig. And he has a series he's been doing on um, church doctrine or the doctrine of salvation, church doctrine. And what he does is he comes at this, the whole section of church doctrine, from two different viewpoints. So you have one person that views a specific set of scriptures in this light, and then you have another who views them in this light. And he, does it, he doesn't come in with a biased motivation. He just gives you each side, and for you guys, for us to talk about and for us to learn from, and then... Uh, to take away with, and he's ve he's very kind, very respectful, because um, I you know I I I've heard many teachings where you can you can tell there's a little bias there. They want you to lean toward this way, and you know they're pushing you that way. He doesn't do that. He just he lays it out. William Lane Craig, Lane Craig. He's he's very well known. He's well known. He um, he's travel. He he's very famous for debating atheists, and he has many books. Um, he goes to college. He's been to Notre Dame. He's been, he goes to many college campuses. and um, Yeah, so that would be very beneficial too. So either one, whatever you guys would like to do, doesn't matter with me. All I care about is if we're growing in the Word of God. That's <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, but, alrighty. Well, Lord willing. Well, I I want to help help me help you. <laughs> Whatever you would like us to do, because we've been through Galatians. We're going to be done with this here soon. We can always do another packet, which eventually, regardless of what we choose to do, I want us to do both because they're both beneficial, of course. But it's just, what do you want to do next? Yeah, what do you want to do next? Because we can go downstairs and uh, the the videos are about 40 minutes long. But it's so it's a it's a it's like an actual class where he is he's teaching and you have people there and in the video some people ask some questions and I was watching some actually last night and the questions that you know are asked they actually they help me come up with questions and then I could see that turning into questions we could talk about with each other now I don't intend for it to be a long drawn out process because eventually we got to go home <laughs> but. So how many now that that is that's another question. So he begins with talking about uh, compared with the doctrine of salvation, there are probably oh boy, there can be. You can he I will say he has more probably about twenty to thirty videos on that. Now we don't have to do the entire thing. We can choose what we want to do. He has he has a very good one on baptism, uh, on the ordinances and the sacraments of the church. He has some on that. Very good, and I think those are only like six videos, six he or seven. Presents various sides. Various sides. Yes, he doesn't come at it. Now he's he's a Protestant. He like meaning he concerning baptism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not bringing no false teaching into, into us. Don't worry about that. But he, concerning baptism, he believes it's an ordinance of the church. But he does bring compelling evidence from each side. He just he comes to the scriptures with an open heart and open mind and tries to put himself within the position of someone who views it this way and someone who views it that way. And um, he opens up to questions being asked, but um, for, that's one example. He's very, he's not biased in his presentation. He just lays it out how it is. This is why this person views these scriptures this way. This is why this person views these scriptures this way. Um, so that would, that class would be result. Um, around theology, that really enhancing our understanding of biblical theology versus if we did the Gospel of John, we'd be doing what we've been doing, just going through reading a section and then just asking questions. So what 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 would you guys like to do? Um, sound good? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, whatever you guys would. Yeah, I know. That's, they, they do the yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's he's got he's got multiple videos on um, the doctrine of God, the doctrine of Christ, um, the doctrine of the nature of man, and um, goes on and on and on. He's got a lot of material, which is very good. Um, but all righty, well, Lord willing, we'll meet this Sunday, and uh, who I'm thinking. Does anyone, when is his uh, surgery, Susie? Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Okay. Okay.